Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to session 21 of Principles of Management course. Students, I am your instructor Dr. Shikha N. Khera from Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University. We shall be discussing one of the most important factors probably because of which the survival or any kind of action is done in life and the terminology is or the concept is motivation. I believe you have heard this term many a times before. But you have you ever thought of that what is this term motivation and why is it so famous or rather it is so important. When you get up in morning, you have a schedule of activities for you. How do you perform that? What is the force behind it that you get up, you get ready, you plan your day, you execute all the planning, you are not all the day sitting idle you are doing some or other action verbs. What are action verbs? Sitting, standing, reading, eating, walking, playing sports etc. So all these action verbs are done because there is a force behind it and that force is the deriving force and this is what we call as motivation. So when it comes to organization it is very important that members who join organization as managers or as blue collar workers or maybe anyone who is a human being and is part of the organization needs that optimum level of deriving force to carry out any activity. So let us today start with this series of motivation sessions. This motivation will be divided into three sessions part 1, 2 and 3. Today I will be taking up part 1 for motivation where we will try to understand the concept and introduction to motivation. Let us dig into this theoretically how it moves further. So motivation is simply the process of encouraging employees to voluntarily give their best in the job. Now this term voluntarily is the most important aspect we should not coax or punish or give any baiting in general but that the force to, to do the work should come out of their own. Motivation as such involves identifying and influencing people behavior in specific direction. So here we are concerned about that the behavior of individual has to be in the path which is already decided by the organizational members. So motivation actually works with individuals desires, energy and determination and stimulates them adequately. So here we would like to also highlight that it drive that moves people for what they actually do. For instance, an employee in his job may decide to work as much hard as possible. Okay? So he is focused on the hard work as and then in order to only avoid punishment, whether this hard work is to avoid punishment or whether it is for growth orientation, that has to be highlighted well. So generally people's desire for factors like money, success, job satisfaction and recognition prompts them to work harder and move ahead and do as desired by the organizational members. So motivating employees is an important and continuous management concern as lack of employee motivation can affect organizational in initiatives and individuals performance. And motivation is a very challenging task. How is it for you people to motivate your peer members to do as you desire or probably to motivate any of your family members to get the work done as you wish. I hope you agree to it that it is highly challenging 
so the same goes for managers as well why so as it arises from within persons and normally differs for each person the level of force or deriving force rather i would say magnitude of the deriving force differs from each person to the other persons so since every person has different set of needs and goals so there is difference in the need and goals of individuals so it is essential to identify those needs and also the appropriate motivational techniques that fulfill them and students here we must see that employees need in organization can broadly be classified into various categories which we shall be dealing with or discussing during the theories of motivation let us see what are the formal definitions by researchers and learned individuals so fulfillment of goals through willing and sustained cooperation from employees is the essence of all the definitions of motivation we shall now look at few definitions first by stephen p robbins motivation is the willingness to exert high level of effort to reach to organizational goals then by huxensi Bunchman motivation is a decision making process through which the inish through which the individual chooses the desired outcome so here motivation is linked with decision making also decision making for what for the action that you wish to do thus we call it is a decision making that decision making sets the motion and behavior appropriate to acquiring them moving further coming on to certain characteristics or what we also call as features of motivation motivation is fundamentally a psychological drive that forces individuals to act in a specific manner so it basically crops up from the mental or cognitive level it involves establishment of link between psychological needs and behavior of the employees motivation is a very complex and goal oriented process you are only motivated to do a particular thing based on what is the goal for it and this goal directs the behavior of individuals also it aims to fulfill the organizational and individual goals in most desired manner this is important students to understand that what is the goal what is the desired level this is this will become the basis for individual to get motivated and if there is some unfulfilled need and wants then it becomes a major prerequisite for motivating the individuals furthermore other characteristics include that it trigger and sustains the desired behavior as long as a person's needs remains unfulfilled this will become a force to move towards the direction which the manager wants the individual to move in another aspect of motivation is that it is a continuous process you cannot motivate your individual for only one task you have to continuously motivate your individuals for longer durations and until he is he or she is part of the organization why so because the fulfillment of one set of need usually gives rise to another set of needs in a person so for human needs may remain active even after the original goal is achieved like for example you when you were in class maybe 10 you thought of that let me just complete this class 10 and now i move on to class 12 then after class 12 you thought there is nothing much let me complete class 12th but after that you realize that i have lot many goals so one need crops up or rises up when the other need gets fulfilled so motivation always is a very comprehensive uh, phenomenon and as such partial motivation is not achievable achievable since needs are inter related the other characteristic of motivation is that it the changed needs and der derive may call for changes in motivational techniques and tools why these change needs and desires will get changed because of change in life priorities individuals they change in their thought processes so probably in the generation which was in 
60s or 70s or maybe in 1950s the desire was to have assets for life okay but now in today's time generation who's a millennial who's born after 2000 probably the life priority is not to have assets but, but to have more of life enjoyment so because of these thought processes the needs and drives also changes thus motivational techniques and tools also need to be changed now motivation can be both internal or external internal motivation that is within the organizational members or individuals thought process external which the organization member or individual gets from the outside depending upon their felt needs their desires and overall environment in the organization motivation also influences students by a variety of forces and pressures arising arising out of factors like socio cultural environment and what comprises of socio cultural environment your family social groups culture value system etc so motivation must always have a positive effect on employee behavior and performance that you should know as a student of management very well now let us see what are the benefits of having motivation or motivational tools and techniques in the organization so this is what we call as importance of motivation so the first importance of motivation is that it leads to high level of performance of an organization when we talk about high level of performance that means the actions or the behavior done by the employee was as appropriate as it was decided by the manager so keeping a motivated and vibrant force in today's time is an essential prerequisite for organization to succeed in today's intense competition in the business environment next it says that motivation impl motivated employee stays in organization for long and takes less leaves so thus we can say that motivation reduces absenteeism and increases talent retention which are very important phenomenon for having a stable growth of the organization so however motivation it is most complex task for managers to retain the talent or decrease the absenteeism due to the fact that what motivates the employees it changes constantly so the manager also has to update himself and that what can be the tools and techniques by which they can achieve this scenario then comes importance of motivation on willingness of employee to work hard now this is something one has to focus more on that the work is self driven and here yet managers need to continuously motivate their people to get the best out of them and to retain them in firm for long duration creating this self drive is a greatest challenge for the organizational manager drivers it motivation drives to the best results and the goals so best result and the goals which are accurately matching the organizational mission and vision statement so motivation is an important tool to get people work hard in their job which is essential requirement for effective fulfillment of organizational goals and plans motivation is helpful in building good labor relations and labor relations here means the relationship between the factory workers or blue collar workers and the white collar workers so certainly workplace motivation infuses positive energy into the work environment an organization can achieve high level of performance productivity and quality towards from the worker when he is motivated so this relationship needs to be harmonious and cordial motivation also leads to improvement of skill and knowledge of the employee so it enables the organization to achieve the willing cooperation and voluntary support of employees for its work methods policies and practices 
through which they can improve the knowledge and skill of the employee and upgrade the employee upgrade the employee so that he can meet the challenges of organizational turbulence which the external environment causes it is an important tool for management why because the management has to get the work done and this work done can only be achieved if the employee is well trained is upgraded and employee is the second aspect employee is self motivated self driven upgraded and self driven employee can make wonders in the organization motivation improves relation between manager and employees so once we have talked about harmonious relationship in terms of blue collar workers here we are talking about harmonious relationship of the employees that is white collar workers are in due parity with each other motivation decreases wastage and accident how come because when the employee is highly upskilled he knows that what is the task that i have to do and how to perform it so how part of performing the task is very much clear to the employee and with this clarity he is able to reach to a lean kind of structure where wastage and accidents are reduced and thus we can students see that how important is motivation as a concept in organization and what benefits it gives to the broader at broader level to the organization let's now move on to various forms of employee motivation now under this motivation is usually associated with unsatisfied needs of employees and thus the nature of employee needs drives manager to choose a specific form of motivation so management through certain common indicators can identify how motivated employees are for instance how do you get to know that my employee is motivated how regular they are this is how you can judge they are motivated how impressive their performance is how many mistakes they make and for you as a manager how difficult it is for you to deal with them so let us see what are the forms of employee motivation first form is called as intrinsic motivation intrinsic motivation refers to the drive or desire that arises from within of an individual to do something and accomplish certain goals so it may simply be redefined as what people do without external inducement you need not tell them or guide them or continuously push them to do the work hard it usually comes from inside an individual without external rewards and satisfaction of successful completion of work is example of intrinsic motivation in in organization intrinsic motivation emerges from employees internal feelings an individual's personal interest their desire the level of satisfaction and fulfillment etc act as the forces for a person to have a within character for getting motivated intrinsic motivate intrinsically motivated employees will seek reward in form of enjoyment interest and satisfaction and work they did not necessarily look forward for any kind of tangible rewards they are more happy if they have a feeling of achievement from their work and that gives them satisfaction so work itself act as an important source of intrinsic motivation for employee are they happy doing that work that's important do they know that work to be done that is also important so this feeling of happiness and knowledge of work plays as a factor for intrinsic motivation and the satisfaction which they derive from completion of this work is the intrinsic motivation so it is generally said that uh, students intrinsic motivation has better and more enduring results than the extrinsic motivation 
and experts on motivation feel that motivation from extrinsic extrinsic sources is just complementary and additive to the intrinsic sources of motivation what does this mean this means that primary motivation is intrinsic motivation only the the ex extrinsic extrinsic motivation is more of a complementing factor to the intrinsic motivation now definitely in organization students there must be some factors which influence intrinsic motivation or which generate intrinsic motivation in the mind of the individual so what are the factors that promote intrinsic motivation in individual first it includes challenge individuals are intrinsically motivated when they do personally meaningful tasks that present optimum or intermediate level of difficulty so everyone has a level of difficulty that they feel that i am capable of if the person is given with the task which is has under the level of his competency then probably he is not willing to do that task but if we give them something which is more above or quite above the competence level again the motivation is not there so the intermediate or the optimum level is what any individual looks forward to as a challenge so that he gets a get going behavior second motivation factor for intrinsic motivation is curiosity curiosity which leads to new ideas curiosity which gives innovation curiosity which creates creativity so individuals eagerness to know the outcome of activity in which they are presently engaged in can create a good magnitude of intrinsic motivation then comes cooperation so satisfaction derived by individuals through help rendered to others in goal accomplishment initiatives is a cooperation feeling if they have that inherent feeling of helping others that may create a good platform for intrinsic motivation in the individual next is control so individuals drive satisfaction when their basic inclination to exercise control over what happens to them are fulfilled so here control also refers to the power associated with the task they are doing and in case they feel that they have all control or power of the task that they are doing probably they gets more motivated to complete that and maybe they develop a sense of responsibility also while doing that task so it generates from within then comes competition competition is a healthy spirit healthy competitive environment can do wonders for individuals so satisfaction derived by individuals when they find their performance positive and superior in comparison to their fellow mem members it creates good intrinsic achievement oriented motivation so comp competition is a par powerful group level intrinsic motivator and it is a positive methodology as well so here students we can note that intrinsic motivation never means that an individual will not look for any external rewards for accomplishment of course that is a inherent desire in every individual to get uh, some rewards and a pat on a back or some appreciation for good work that they do rather it is it indicates to the management that external rewards alone are not sufficient to produce desired behaviors amongst the employees so they need to go for in addition to intrinsic motivation they have to go for the extrinsic motivation as well so further moving on to two more characteristics which enable the intrinsic motivation they include recognition and fantasy recognition here is what i was just mentioning some kind of appreciation is desired by individuals if not in any kind of tangible product but this intangible recognition and appreciation can create amount of trust and connect with the organization and can enhance ocb what is ocb organizational citizenship behavior and this is a feeling that an individual feels that i belong to this place i belong to this organization and the organization is also reciprocating me in a equal manner so i must put in my best and showcase the 
uh, showcase the organizational members that I am capable of doing these tasks and I shall perform these tasks effectively. Then comes a fantasy part which is something we call as satisfaction derived by individuals through their sheer imagination of situations and objectives that may not exist in reality. So, here they visualize that is not actually happening may be a daydreaming kind of scenario where they visualize that they have achieved the outcome which they have been given by the organizational members. So, this fantasy thought also gives them a kick to move ahead and perform. Now that we have discussed lot of factors which promote intrinsic motivation in the organization, let us see the other form of motivation, the second form of motivation that is extrinsic motivation. So what is extrinsic motivation? When the drive to do something or accomplish certain goals emerges from outside of the individual, it is called as extrinsic motivation. So, usually it comes from outside the individual and here we may say that the rewards are independent of the job. So, what do we mean here? They do a particular job and rewards are associated with it and they provide satisfaction that the job itself may not provide. They are doing a job that is fine, but the reward is giving more satisfaction to the employee. When such scenario comes in, so that means this reward is playing role of an extrinsic motivation. For example, increased pay and promotion are the very common examples for extrinsic motivation. Pay raise, material rewards, promotion, praise, recognition, social approval, time offs from job certain times, special assignments and status are few examples for extrinsic motivation. Work linked with extrinsic motivators are capable of dominating the extrinsic motivator to the end that extrinsic motivation simply disappears. So, this is something uh, you as a manager also need to think over it that if extrinsic motivation dominates then extrinsic motivation vanishes which is actually not a right sign but still this is the fundamental human behavior. So, managers have to find out coping up strategies to adjust to these two types of forms of motivation. Extrinsic motivation is often linked to term engagement here. Now, what is the term engagement here? We are talking about the term employee engagement. So, the actual feeling of being motivated is often called employee engagement and this feeling enables the employees to put their optimum efforts and work in a motivated behavior. What is employee engagement students? It is described as the response or consequence which is linked to the behavior. Engagement also means that we have allocated appropriated, appropriate task and resources to the employee. When we have done that, then he is able to utilize his time properly and we say that he is properly engaged employee. So, engagement can be classified into either a positive engagement or a negative engagement. So, when appreciation for example, monetary rewards or any other pleasant consequence follow the desired behavior, we call it as a, what do we call students? This is called as a positive engagement. So, the purpose of positive engagement is to encourage the desired behavior and ensurance that this desired behavior will continue also. It is not a one time that you give reward and then positive behavior is seen and then it vanishes, no. So, as against the positive engagement, we have the second type of engagement that is the negative engagement. So, when unpleasant outcomes like nagging by the boss and some kind of reprimands also take place and maybe you know uh, some 
kind of benefits are removed from the organizational setup. Thus, the consequent behavior is not the desired behavior and because of which the person is then moved towards negative engagement and that is what is not expected or is not desired by organization member. So, what to do then? So, these kinds of reinforcement they persuade the employees to do better in their job so that they can have unpleasant condition removed from their work environment. So, we must focus more on positive motivation than the negative one. So, now the total motivation what do we mean by total motivation here? Total motivation means the combination of positive and negative motivation. Total motivation can be greater only when the intrinsic and extrinsic motivators are both are at high level. So, in other words total motivation is likely to be lower if the intrinsic motivation is low and extrinsic motivation is high or vice versa. So, the different kinds of motivational practices of a reputed power company we shall now see as an example. So, students I believe you by now have understood the forms of motivation intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and how we can reinforce these two types of motivations in the members. So, here we have this example of an organization LNT power and here intrinsic and extrinsic motivational exercises are mentioned. So, it says that as a part of its motivational strategy LNT power develops the entrepreneurial skills of its workforce by enabling and empowering them to take up appropriate risk. So, first thing for positive motivation is development as an entrepreneur. Also second it encourages employee participation by inviting suggestions and opinions. Then it gives competitive compensation and rewards to motivate their workforce. As a part of their intrinsic motivational strategy, it provides challenging, interesting and motivating assignments to the people that offer them a sense of professional fulfillment. So, here we see this company also offers employee freedom at work which can be another source of intrinsic motivation unmatched leadership and opportunity to grow which is an inherent desire for any individual and along with these motivational practices some other activities that the company gives is it offers fun based innovative motivational activities like playing instruments, singing, dancing for its employees. So, you can see students how well the organization which is a very famous organization LNT power is utilizing the concept of intrinsic and extrinsic motivation to keep their workforce always ready for desired behavior. Let us now move on to the next concept that is approaches to the motivation. Now approaches to the motivation here means that the major approach for enhancing employee motivation and these approaches then become a supporting factor. along with various sources of motivation. What were the sources of motivation? Various intrinsic and inter extrinsic rewards, benefits that or the environment that the individual was getting. Along with that there are certain approaches which add on and influence the factor of motivation to greater level. So, we have compensation approach, job design approach, organizational cultural approach and workplace relationship approach. Let us discuss these approaches. Compensation approach. Compensation means the remuneration that an individual gets in return to what he provides to the organization. This system attempts to offer extrinsic, extrinsic motivation to the employees and compensation system is typically divided into either direct compensation or indirect compensation. So, what are the sources of direct compensation in the organization? You have basic pay, variable pay, then other benefits like profit sharing and equity plans. They all are the examples for direct compensation. 
then indirect compensation inclu includes various benefits which are enjoyed by the employee and but are paid by the organization. So this is the compensation approach for example canteen facility, transport facility they are the example for indirect compensation where the employee need not pay anything but they are getting the additional benefit out of it. Besides the base salary an organization also offers productivity linked wage incentive to motivate the employee and enhance their performance. Under productivity linked wage incentive means that they offer some number of pieces if they are made say for example 8 pieces to be made in a day if the person makes instead of 8 10 pieces then the additional 2 pieces need to be given some incentive so that is the wage incentive provided to the person. Now these wage incentives are typically further classified into 3 categories what kind of wage incentives can be there they can be individual incentive scheme or group incentive scheme and then there can be organization wide incentive schemes. Now what are these individual incentive schemes here individual incentive program when performance of each employee can be measured with a fair amount of accuracy. So it is individual effort and portion of employees pay is decided as function of his or her performance. So the aim of this scheme is to enhance motivation and efficiency also commitment and involvement of the employee and without doubt there is a direct and specific link students between employee performance and earnings as such the link is usually to enhance the productivity. We have already always seen this that the effort that an employee puts in and the performance that it gives has a direct link between the two. So individual incentive plans enhance this link and brings in optimum performance. On the other hand group incentive systems are for the employees to avoid problems of interpersonal rivalry resulting mutual blocking of performance by the employees. Similarly, when individual job performance cannot be measured with a fair amount of accuracy, organization may opt for a group incentive scheme. So you have many jobs in modern organization which require collective effort. So for jobs which require collective effort for many persons individualistic attitude might hamper the successful performance of these jobs though that is a negative side of it and probably that is inevitable also. So in certain situation it becomes imperative for organizations to offer group incentive program to accomplish organizational and performance goals. The essence of group incentive program is gain sharing by members through cost reduction measures. So when you are performing probably you, in, you are in a position to reduce the cost and then the cost which is saved can be given as a gain to the members. The two factors major factors influencing group incentive scheme decisions are the size of the group and the nature of the activity. Now size of the group if it is smaller or if it is larger what is going to be the difference if it is smaller cohesiveness is higher and gain sharing is also higher and the conflicts are lesser and vice versa in the larger group so it is better to have a smaller group when it comes to group incentive schemes and the nature of activity also what is the challenge matter involved in the activity or what is the physical effort which is required or maybe the mental effort which is required to carry out the job. So depending on that the size of the group is also discussed or planned. In organization wide incentive plan students an organization aims at inducing and motivating all employees to work hard both for organization and for their own interest. Here it reminds me of Henry Fuel's one of the principles. What was the prin uh, principle students? Henry Fuel talked about that we should always keep subordination of individual interest to organizational interest. So this is what is promoted in organization wide incentive plan. Here the incentives available to employees under organization wide plans normally depend on overall performance of organization for a specific period of time. And the primary aim of this method is to develop what? To develop employee unity, 
cooperation and eventually ownership of the ownership of the employees for the interest of the organization after compensation approach comes the job design approach the job design approach is the primary purpose of job design approach is to increase organization ability to meet its objectives effectively and job design methods are there students which we shall be discussing which intend to offer intrinsic motivation to the employees so what are various job design methods let us see them which actually includes job enrichment self managing teams job rotation job reengineering job enlargement etc so job design strategy also we call them or methods so first one is job enrichment job enrichment is what it refers to development of work practices that challenge and motivate the employees to perform better now in job enrichment students there are there is addition of some more challenging aspect to the current job that the individual members are making in self managing teams they are usually entrusted with the overall responsibility of accomplishment of work or goal they enjoy autonomy in decision making on matters involving when how when and how the work is done so the self managing teams are the ones where they do not have any boss or manager over them they know the goal they know the resources they know they have devised their path also and they are self motivated to move ahead and complete the task and give the report to the manager so this is also one of the ways how the job job design can be enriched then comes next that is job rotation what happens in job rotation an employee who is working at one position is given the charge of another position say someone who is managing the job of so in job rotation what happens students that employees who are working at one place they are shifted to the other place maybe for a temporary time period for example someone who is looking after the production facility is also asked to look after another facility that is maybe a subdivision of marketing section or maybe subdivision of administrative work and this rotation is done so that the person who is not available maybe in case of vacancy is there the person who was carrying out that admin job is not available he is on leave or he has left the job so in order to have a continuity of that job the person who was at production facility is now shifted to this job for the time being so one the job of administrative nature it keeps on going there is no gap in performance there and there is no stoppage of work also the second benefit of job rotation is the person who has been shifted from production facility to the administrative profile he now knows nitty gritties of this profile also so he gets in one way on the job training for that job and the third benefit of job rotation is that the person who has been shifted from production to administrative will have a relief from the monotony of the job that he was doing so thus this is also one of the strategies of job design which helps motivate the individuals if i may quickly recollect what are we discussing at this time we are discussing what are various approaches to motivation how we can motivate the employee so the first one we have discussed about the compensation where we discuss the direct and indirect compensation plan the second one we are discussing about the job design so within job design what all changes we can do so that we motivate the employees wherein we have discussed self managed teams can be there job enrichment can be there and the third one is job rotation then comes job reengineering this is also another aspect of job design which can help the organization to have a motivational approach for workers in job reengineering the process of streamlining jobs in the form of uh, combining few jobs into one job is and redistributing the task among various jobs and reallocating the resources takes place it also involves reconsideration of methods of job performance physical layouts and performance standards so here you can see students that the engineering part that is more of conceptual engineering here is done in order to reframe the job 
and this reframing is job of the job is done so as to maybe add on some part which is little more challenging so as to delete some part which is redundant so as to add on something which is more in in today's time relevant with respect to the competitive forces around the organization then the next strategy for job design is peer performance review peer performance evaluation technique helps the organization to have a peer review from people who are from same rank to rate one another what is the benefit benefit of it benefit is that the persons are performing the same job so when they are doing the same job they know that what are the challenges or what are the issues with the job and thus they can the one who is giving the feedback also has an in depth knowledge of the job so he can provide the right and accurate feedback to a larger extent for the employee in concern the next strategy for job design to motivate the individual is job enlargement under this job enlargement transform the jobs to include more or different tasks as the term enlargement comes in here the scope is increased so if i am teaching here and my job is to teach and i i have been told that i have to mark the answer sheets also i have to make the question paper also i have to give the results also so that is the scope is increased addition to my duties so that is enlargement of the job so it its basic aim is to make the job more attractive by increasing the operations performed by the person in the job and hence forth probably some incentives are also added on then comes participative management so in participative management means that employees management allows the employee to play a greater part in decision making process which is important and it has been found that this is useful in improving quality of work life job enrichment and quality circles and total quality management altogether finally the empowerment of employee is affected and they feel very highly motivated they feel that yes we are also part of decision making benefit here is another because they are doing the job so they know what are the various loop holes or bottlenecks in performing the job so they can convey the those issues and challenges to the management while the decision making is on high performance work design is one of the latest i would say a uh, very recent not latest but recent uh, content where the motivation can be enhanced so developing hpws is also considered as a strategy for job enrichment effective work groups and creating an organization through technique to achieve high level of performance so high performance work designs are basically having clusters of practices together which are practiced by the organization in groups third approach that adds on to motivation in organization is organization culture approach so what is organization culture students organization culture is various values norms beliefs rules regulations systems orders that the organization performs or believes in or follows it is reflected in the form of code of conduct and ethical values of the organizational system every organization has said an unsaid culture few norms are written down which all members have to follow maybe it is the norm can be that everyone has to be very punctual and everyone has to wear a formal dress code everyone has to address every other person as sir or ma'am or maybe the other culture can be they have to address by the first name all these are part of organization culture and this organization culture when it is positively groomed can become a very important tool for motivating the individuals to remain in organization and perform better so here the culture of organization has direct impact on motivational level as i explained and it is it belongs to the corporate philosophy and leadership strategies culture influences the way employees evaluate ideas and act upon them so thus generally employees are associated with organization culture that promotes what team work collaboration support and encouragement that should be the ingredients of organization culture to have high motivation of employees and as against this employees linked to organization culture that advocates centralization dependence close guidance they are less motivated so this is important learning for you people as a manager that what kind of organization culture you should promote in your organization tomorrow when you become manager so these are the key 
parameters of that organization culture. Then comes workplace relationship approach. So this workplace relationship approach is also a motivating factor. Here the nature and type of relationship which exists between the management and the employee plays a major role in motivating the employee. It influences the employee to perform intrinsically if he feels that there is trust in the relationship, confidence in the relationship, loyalty in the relationship and the concern in the relationship is there. If this is there then it is a positive relationship and that grooms motivation. While in organizations where labor management relation is free of tension, conflict, distrust, employees are li likely to be better motivated. So when relationship are strained in the organization, then whole effort goes in vain and probably the organizational employees, they lose faith and because of which there is low motivation. So with low motivation, it is difficult for manager to enhance the intrinsic motivation or even the extrinsic rewards cannot play a major role if the environment is of conflict and distrust in organization. Now how we can have a better workplace relationship approach it is through open communication system. It can ensure that the action of managers are properly understood in the spirit properly here is mean, means that in the right spirit in which the member has or the manager has delegated the work and interpreted by the employees in right manner. So open communication system and then this can help in turn help the managers to motivate their employees better and create positive attitudes towards them. Ultimately we have to gain this, we have to gain the positive attitude from the organizational employees unless otherwise even if they have best of reward systems due to lack of positive attitude they will not perform. So let us see now motivational practices of an India based fortune 500 company which is presented in this particular table. These are motivational strategies at ONGC. I am sure students you have heard of this name before oil and natural gas corporation which is now depending on the size and nature of business, HR vision and management philosophy of each organization may have difference in them and also the strategies by which they motivate their workforce also differs from each other. But a good and clear understanding of the needs and expectation of employees very much essential prerequisite for success of any motivational program. So for this the motivational practices of ONGC a fortune 500 listed company at the global level with 18,000 strong workforce is worth mentioning. The HR vision of ONGC namely is to build nurture the world class human capital for leadership in energy business. Just see to it students they are not talking only about having a vision to their vision is focused towards human capital not towards only profitability. It provides clear direction to HR department in its endeavor to develop effective motivational strategies. In fact the HR policies of the company aim at developing a highly motivated vibrant and self driven team. So this is what we have discussed in theory as you can see now that we can correlate between the theory and the practice. Theory also teaches us that we need to have a vibrant and self driven team. So this company has a reward. What are the practices here? Reward and recognition scheme, grievance handling scheme, suggestion scheme to keep its employees motivated. Then it has several incentive schemes also to enhance the motivation and productivity of employees. And what are the example for incentive schemes that ONGC is giving? It includes productivity, hon honorarium scheme, job incentive scheme, quarterly incentive, reserve in incentive honorarium, roll out of succession planning, group incentive for cohesive team working with a view to enhance productivity group wise collectively. So since this company strongly feels that motivation plays a pivotal role in HR development it has inbuilt system to recognize and reward its employees periodically. This is also very important that what is the timeline in giving the 
benefit or rewards if the timeline takes a long time probably the reward loses its importance so thus this employee giving them periodically on a regular interval is a very key feature of ongchr policy now to sum up whatever we have discussed in today's session let us see what are the outcomes of motivation so if we motivate our employees effectively how are the organize how is the organization going to get benefited so employees may be more receptive to changes initiated by management due to the goodwill and mutual trust generated by the motivation factor so this is a one of the benefits that you get out of motivation motivation motivated employees may not keep an inherent animosity towards the management and they may consider organization change plans rationally which is very very important otherwise if they don't do so then they may go for resistance towards this change so motivation actually prepares them to be ready with the change plans keep employee absenteeism and at lower level in organization by encouraging employees to work regularly we have discussed that earlier so when employees are dissatisfied or their needs remain unfulfilled they will suffer from low motivation and they try to abstain from their duties as much possible in all manners so they may also quit their job if motivation and recognition it excludes eludes them for long and motivation thus ensures workforce stability so we have to see that they remain with us and they are not uh, moving out of the job motivation further facilitates the maintenance of cordiality in employer employee relation within the organization and when employee needs are fulfilled they develop a sense of loyalty and like to identify themselves more with their organization so indeed motivated employees can understand their management better to avoid any confrontation and motivation enables the organization to have a positive image amongst the general public which enhances the brand image so they enhances enhance what they enhance their employer branding what is employer branding students where em, where potential employee want to work with that organization you also are uh, you know you also are going to join the organization tomorrow and definitely you must have some dream organizations in your mind and these dream organizations are nothing but the employer branding that has been created by the particular organization where you want to serve and that employer branding is also because of the motivational techniques and tools and practices they are utilizing so finally we can say that motivation also enhances the attitude level of the employee to a larger extent which adds on to high satisfaction on both levels and gains for both the parties that is employees and the employers so here we conclude the introduction to management and i shall be taking further the different process the process of management and various theories of uh, sorry i shall be taking various theories of motivation and process of motivation in the forthcoming sessions that is part 2 and 3 for motivation this is the bibliography students which i have referred to for this particular session you may also look into this if in case you feel that you want to dig into more details so this is all from my side thank you